peoples, Arth, Wampir, and welcome to episode 11 of Ace Attorney Investigations. Last time, we did some work. We cross-examined Francisca. We proved Edward's innocence once again. We went into the flight attendant's room to interrogate Rona because she's she's very suspicious. And we found out that she's just really, really sad. Like, I mean, borderline gumshoe levels of sad. But no one can be as sad as gumshoe. He's the nadir of sadness. He is the bedrock of which all sadness in the Ace Attorney series is formed. Going on these wild goose chases, you're disgracing the Von Karma name! And what do you mean by that? The suitcase came from the cargo hold! The fact alone tells me the whole story! Yes, which is why I said the culprit must be a crew member who used their key card. Miles Edgeworth! You're proposing that the killer rode the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, that's the only realistic possibility. That other attendant, Miss Meal, I asked her earlier and she had this to say. Francis got, inf got information on Miss Meal? Man, I underestimated you, Francisca. Good job. In order to go down to the elevator, d to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold, a different key card is required. A different key one. Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Roa Tiniro, and only you. <clears throat> ah! What is this true, Miss Tiniro? Yes, I kept that key card in my locker all this time. Well, could you please show us that card right now? Yes, hold on. Ah, I, I don't believe it. What's wrong? The key card, it, it's gone. Ha ha ha, very clever. Pretending that your card was stolen, when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You've really thought this through. W wait, it's not like that. You can tell us all about it. What it's like at that the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Edgeworth. M Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, that was awkward. What's wrong? There's this bleak written all over your face. Francisca, I know that you are the only investigator on this case. However, hold it. Don't you even think about wasting any more of my time. You know the rules as well as I do. Evidence speaks louder than words. That is what I was told when I was two, and that is what I will be. St that's what I will stick by. Even if it is in a courtroom, the ba that basic tenet still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. To be continued. Ooh. No, I will not be saving. March 12th. Cargo hold. D wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? It's so big! Must resist urge to say that's what she said. This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and ultra luxurious first class seating. So this is the real scene of the murder. There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, soy! Ooh, I just love pushing the buttons on elevators and crosswalk signals. But those buttons, uh, crosswalk signals don't work, literally. Have you ever tried pushing those buttons at crosswalk signals and they just don't work? It's like a psychological experiment. It's like, it's like the governments from all over the world who use that. They just set up this one big psychological experiment just to see, okay, well, people push this button. How many times will they push that button? Here, you should give it a try, so go and push it. The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, detective. It can't move. Oh yeah, I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. The but the button would be pushed. It could light up, Gumshoe. Well, nothing would happen normally anyways without the special key card. Both the doors to the attendance room and the elevator's control panels. <laughs> Require a key card which makes it impossible for a passenger to come down here. All sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says flammable, this one says pharmaceuticals. This one says, for exorcism use only. Jinxie Tenma? So the Tenma family was ordering... So Jin little Jinxie Tenma, she was just ordering her exorcism slips? Just order them in bulk? Just what kind of operations is airline running? K 
keep it down to this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on the cargo crew. This job sure brings back memories of when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. I look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. A story that I do not want to hear about. But no matter how he pulls on the puppy doll, guys, I have no intention of doing so. I didn't know this plane was ca I didn't know this plane was capable of carrying such large pieces of cargo. This thing's a solid two of you on top of each other, soy! It would probably take twenty of you to cover the entire surface of this monstrosity. What really? Hmm. Yeah, I guess that sounds about right. That's really no need to take that throwaway estimate seriously, Detective. Yes, we're now going to throw Edgeworth and Gumshoe into our Ace Attorney in, in, into our Ace Attorney's SI units measurements. First we had pearls, now we have Edgeworths, and now we have Gumshoes. Holy suitcase, Miss Edgeworth! It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase there! This must be all that's left of, over the ones they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. The paint job is really cool, don't you think? It's practically screams Artsy! Oh, oh, wow, well, purchase one then! I'm sure it'll bring you much happiness. It's it's like the UF suitcases, Gumshoe! It's unloved! It's abused! It's hideous! It really it is the UF suitcases! You think so? Then maybe I will! Let's see here! Twelve hundred dollars! I think I'll pass! It's worth more than twelve hundred gumshoes! And Mr. Nero wonders why they don't sell. You need two jobs just to buy one. It definitely looks like one is missing. What's this brittle substance I'm sipping on? It's a bunch of glass fragments. And now we have glasses. Broken glasses and glass shards. I think we can safely conclude that th these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses! Exactly what I was thinking! I'm sure the shards would match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses lenses. Ergo, the victim was here, just as I suspected. So you're saying that the realty of the crime was here, Zoe? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Perhaps it's, it's a bit early to draw a conclusion. However, I believe that the probability is just skyrocketing considerably. All that's left is to find the murder weapon. Hey, what's the suitcase? What's with the suitcase, pal? It's what the victim checked in, sir. So, the suitcase belonged to his ex. I don't think he'd mind if we took a closer look. There's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, a file! And there's a file of Ms. Valcom in it, too! It looks like a profile of Francisca. Psychological profile? You see that guy from overseas that we've ordered to deal with Francisca's anger management? The guy who dealt with bears? Oh yes! Yeah, I remember! That one psychologist from overseas who was basically comparing Francisca's anger to that of bears. He's gonna study her! Put her in the pen with the bears! Why would Mr. Hicks have a file on her? A warning! You arrived at the scene of this crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct the investigation. It seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides the murder. Yes, I was! I've been following a very large and involved government le governmental level international crime, but it's much too large for one person to take on alone. So it was decided that I would form a joint investigation with Interpol. Interpol is involved. It's a top secret operation, so I can't really tell you more than I already have. There's something much more urgent that we should be dealing with right now. Don't waste my time or yours. Come on, prosecutor's badge. Aw, oh, come on! No dialogue from Francisca! Now, why would Mr. Hicks have a have documents profile for this guy? Oh, I know. I mean, he's a big, he's a big fan, Miss Von Karma, sorry. 
Francisca said that she had come to this airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Higgs had heard she was coming here and followed her. Maybe he heard about all those cases of assault she has done all over the world and was going to arrest her. He had, like, a taser, some gas mask. He was going to, like, had enough tranquilizer dots to put down five large elephants. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was in actuality Interpol Agent Hicks. I think Francisca has, come, has some explaining to do. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile to detail information about you and the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Though frankly, all he would have to tell him is, Hey, just look out for the crazy girl, crazy woman with the whip, who, who's dressed like a vamp, who's dressed like a Victorian vampire. Which makes him not Mr. X, but rather Interval Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I should have known you'd figure it out, Miles. But it looks like they, they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive a, an Interval Agent then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. He went undercover to investigate this crime. And it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. I think we now have pretty definitive we have pretty definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what is he doing down here, Zoe? There's nothing to my luggage. Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down here to get it. Maybe he wanted to burn those ugly suitcases with fire. Yo! Agent Hicks came here for a work related reason, of that I'm sure. Well, I'm sure he was here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisca, do you know exactly what he intended to pursue in to pursue his investigation? No, unfortunately, I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see, but this raises another question. A normal passenger can't gain access to the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and into the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments and his broken glasses are testing to that, and then... Gilla put Agent Hicks into the one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator, but while they were riding it up... The plane hit that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open, and Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was mice scattered all over the elevator floor. Yeah! I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, Zoe? I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth, but the killer can be no other than Miss Rhoda Tenuro. Definitive evidence. If it was a crew member, any of them could have shown Agent Hicks to the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is that the key card that allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high level access is Miss Rhoda Tenuro. I think that a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. Oh, my foot is really itching. Like, I'm sorry, shed. That might be true, but then it could be anyone, including Miss Mio or even the captain. Don't be a fool. A plane without a pilot in, his, in a cockpit is like. A horse without a rider, crop in hand, much like Scruffy over here. <laughs> I can't disagree with her on that, Detective Gum. She does always need a guiding hand. Very well, then what about the other flight today, Miss Meal? Ha! Huh, I thought you might ask about her. Hold it. But it's highly unlike well, it's highly likely that the key card was stolen from Mr. Nero. Darn foot hair. It's highly likely. Is that possibil possibility the best you can come up with? And you call yourself a disciple of my father. I'm no longer a disciple of your father. What was I saying? I'm a disciple of your father, Francisca. And especially in the past few years when I found out he murdered mine. Yeah. Yes, well, while I don't have any evidence, I... Be quiet, you're a disgrace. There's more evidence for 
pointing to Miss Rotinio, you know. It's not just the key guard you gives her away. Are you talking about the murder weapon, the Mr. I Fly Piggy Bank? Yes, she is also the only person with the key to open the display case. Really? I always love how Francisca, she's one. She's always just so teetering on the edge of just having a daddy issue breakdown, literally. But that's a fake! Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth! You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring! If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we searched the entire cargo and came up empty handed. There must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as a murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the authenticity of this weapon? The body! Now, this guy, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I not say that you would may a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks' head is, the con is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Y yes, sir! Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks' autopsy. Oh, you fool, Francisca! You're entering my domain, the domain of autopsy reports. Seriously, Edgeworth rules autopsy reports. You do not mess with Edgeworth's autopsy reports. <laughs> yes, sir! And Gumshoe just moonwalks away. Well, we got big problems, Edgeworth! Oh, for a second there, I thought we were getting Cory. I was getting Cory in the house flashbacks, literally. Just, I'm like, oh no, it went dark screen. What, what is it, Detective? They're still doing the autopsy, but they said that they already know this one thing for sure. Report now! The doctor has one giant bruise from a beam from his shoulder down to his mid-back. And the victim's shoulders to his mid-back. He was beating over such a wide area. Well, I think maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Mr. Hicks. It wasn't just his head, the killer went all on him multiple times, so it was like Miss Von Karma on a good day. No envelope? No manila folder? For shame, Gumshoe. Scruffy, what is how a grudge against Mr. Hicks supposed to mean? I well, that's, uh... Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the matter weapon, Detective? Oh, well, they said that they were still looking into that, so You're completely useless! No! Sir, I told you already, right, you can't go down there! No! You will remove yourself from my way! I will part you like Moses in the Red Sea! Except if Moses, he had my beauty! Watch all that racket. My luggage! My cargo! They're mine! And not the mountain will return them to me! I'll beat you up with my ten rings of fury! We're still investigating the cargo! Please understand and have a little patience! I suppose that is no choice. I will kill you. I will stop you with all of my sharp car keys to my Cadillac! I have a Cadillac at my rental car! I also have a Volvo! That finally, I think he has. Hey, wait, where are you? You have let me don't trust but you strong force! Ah! That is the ultimate power, strong force! You won't get past me! Ah! This is, wait, that's it! So that's what this whole thing has been about! Further, there's the man of the key to this, to this, uh, to this place that held the murder weapon. Slow motion ball. After all, you know that we searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. The doctor said it's one giant brute from a bean from his shoulders down to his mid-back. Oh yeah, I, I needed to see the bloody shirtless picture of Acme Hicks. That is my life. Okay. Now cause of death. Okay, good. 
Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, and which is, which is why there is extensive bruising over such a large area. But is that really the cor correct conclusion to draw from this evidence? The bruise from his shoulder to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then the piggy bank is much too small to recall that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. If we're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we all over overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally, it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. But what was all that about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Francisca! W what What do you want? I found it, Francisca. I found the Romano weapon. Y you did? He really jumped? We didn't realize it until now, but the answer has to be right in front of us this whole time. He might be on. We should go check up on him, There's a pompous attitude yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. I'm rather your glue. Whatever you, set, you throw at me bounces off me and goes back to, and sticks to you. I love just how Edward and Francisca, they're just having this sibling squabble while Gumshoe's actually saying, Oh, this guy could be dead! He's coming from a prosecutor with a habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyways, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back it with evidence. You two aren't listening to me, aren't you? Go on, show me the real murder weapon if you speak of. Don't have evidence to show. Hmm. I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reason for a foolish fool for a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should phrase it as that which caused Agent Hicks' death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I figured out what the real cause of death. I really want to say this. I know it's free fall, but I want to say these two. They don't really ding you too much, but I want to do this. The victim was strangled to death inside the elevator because enemies are evil! But there's no marks on his neck because the killer found a way to hide them somehow. And the bruising on his back and his broken neck was caused by his son fall to the ground. Can you explain how the killer magically erased strangulation marks from around his neck? How did your father manage to hide the fact that he was shot in the shoulder for 15 years? Is that the case? Please allow me to dem demonstrate. Ah! That's gonna leave a mark! Oh, that wasn't such a bad guess, Mr. Edward! Without a shred of proof, did he just accuse me of making a good guess? Wait, but he did imply I was on the right track. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out one. I was a suffocation as well. The victim suffered from a lack of oxygen in the elevator and suffocated! It happens! A and... The bruising of the back of his broken neck was caused by his son fall to the ground. You are like a fly buzzing in my ear. Be gone! Be gone, thought! Ah! Oh, that was such a bad guess, Mr. Edge. With that a shred of proof. Did he just confuse me like a good guess? Wait, but he didn't I was on the right track. But, oh, too bad they didn't make a DL6 reference. I mean, Edge, with that happens! Free fall. The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. He th th fell to his death? Yes. And this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and his back. And the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. But, but the murder happened inside the plane. I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. You you can't mean... Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then, then, we, we're in trouble. We may have a second death on our hands, oi. Hey, you told me you're dead, pal. Wyatt, why are you screaming? He's alive. And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That means it's li that man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible given the current circumstances. The 
current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Borgenian pancake for sure! I suppose that man over there still wouldn't be breathing. But it, the reality is that the cargo box is there. So there's no point in entertaining your wild hyp hypothetical scenarios. It may be there now. But there's no proof that it was always there. Ha! Huh. As if that, there could have been a window of time when the giant box wasn't there. Ah, but there was. What? What can I use to show her that the possible... So it's possible the box was always there. Zangfa! You refueled in the Republic of Zangfa? Yes, it's fly this flyer has short layover in Zangfa in order to refuel. But that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What? The box in question was only transferred on this display at that time. To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next this box in question. Oh, it's labeled Zangfa Express! Correct, meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Zangfa. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean that the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Zangfa leg of the flight, making a clear drop from which AGX could fall into his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still very far fetched. That allow me the chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. My first order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Okay, anyways, I think now would be a good time to end things off. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. We come back with the next one. Like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you later. Bye.